Hey, what's up guys? How is it going with the progress? I'm Eub and I hope you are doing well. Today, we are going to see the client server model from a different angle and take a close look at that. So, what is exactly a client and what do we mean by a server? How does the client server model works and is there any alternative to that? We will answer all these questions and more. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Let's begin with a brief introduction. The web is a service which is built on top of the internet to allow computers to share and exchange data easily and reliably. And when we say data, it can be anything such as images, videos, documents, etc. in any form. And for that, sometimes the web is referred to as a client-server model communication because there are always computers that ask for data which are called clients and the computer that gives the data, in other words, the computer that serves, which is the server. Now, let's be more specific. What is a client? A client can be a machine or a program. When we say a client machine, we are actually talking about the devices that the end user can use to access the web. For example, your laptop or desktop is a client. Smartphones, tablets, etc. are all client machines. On the other hand, a client program is a program that allows the user to make requests through the web. Can you think of one? Yeah. A web browser is a client program. A user can make a request for a web page through the web browser, right? Can you think of another one? Some programs such as word processors or photo editing software have an excess of online resources that you can get from their servers, such as Teams or, I don't know, maybe help. Sometimes you find online support. In this case, these programs are called clients. So, what you need to remember is that a client, whether it is a machine or a program, is an appliance and a way to make requests through the web, okay? This is what we mean by a client. A server on the other side is a computer program, not a device, a computer program. Here, we want to understand and clarify everything, okay? Because we see people define servers as high-performance computers. Yes, those computers are servers in some extent, but strictly speaking, they are called so because they run programs that serve requests. They run server programs that provide functionality and serve other programs called clients. And also because they run server operating systems. We can run a Windows 10 or a Linux desktop version on a high performance machine, right? So they are called servers because they run server programs. A single server can serve multiple clients at the same time and it runs 24-7 without stopping. This is why we need actually supercomputers to run such programs. Also, we can run multiple servers on a one single machine. And here we are talking about virtual servers. There are several types of servers. Each one serves by doing a specific task. For example, web servers such as Apache serve HTTP requests. Database servers run a database management system such as MySQL and other types of servers. I will talk about them in detail in another video. Now, we can stay here all the day talking about servers and their types and how they work, but here's what you need to know. A server can contain web resources, host web applications, source user and program data, and do a lot of things. And it is used to serve hundreds or thousands of clients. Also, a server is always listening for requests. And as soon as it receives one, it responds with a message. Now that we know what exactly a client and a server is, we can define the client-server model in one sentence. The client-server model is an architecture on the web that splits computers into two sections. Computers that ask for and request services, and they are called clients, and computers that serve clients, and they are called servers. The client-server model works through request response cycle via HTTP messages. And to explain that, I need another 5 minutes, which is why I dedicated a whole video to that, the HTTP and the web. It's also worth mentioning that the client-server model is just one way for the computers to communicate via the web. And while this architecture is based on a centralized structure, there is another way to communicate and it is a decentralized one. It is the opposite of the client-server model and it is called the peer-to-peer -peer model. Understanding the two models and contrasting them may help you in your understanding of communications on the web. In the peer-to-peer -peer model, 
There is no client and no server. Both computers can be requesters and response providers. In other words, each one of them can be whether a client or a server, and each computer is functionally identical to the other. They are able to send and receive data directly with one another, and both of them can upload or download information. And of course, they are not required to be connected 24-7. An example of the peer-to-peer -peer model is BitTorrent or video chat protocols. Understanding these models can be very helpful for web developers. So, to sum up, we've seen that a client is a machine or a program that we use to make requests through the web. Also, a server is a program that listens for our requests and respond to them. The client-server model is a centralized web architecture that classifies computers into two sections, requesters and response providers. And finally, there is an alternative for the client-server model, which is the peer-to-peer -peer model. In the peer-to-peer -peer model, all computers are functionally equal. And that's it. Here we go. Today, we've made another step towards the expertise, right? So yeah, don't forget to subscribe. And until the next video, stay tuned.